Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath. And it's time to get into the bike. Dolphin in the boat. Oh Woo! Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. Let's do this. 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 Alright, folks. In this episode, we're going to do a catch, clean, and cook on a fish that is considered the chicken of the sea. That's right. We're going to do the skipjack tuna. Before we get into this, though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright, so we're going to start out by catching this fish. Went out the other day, headed out to a place that I call the 550 Ledge, started trolling around, doing a little bit of blind trolling, saw some tuna action busting on top of the water. Made a beeline right for it and got the hookup. So here we go. Let's get into this. All right, folks. So we've had our Boca Inlet. We headed a little bit to the north. We're sitting in right around 400 feet of water. We're going to do a little bit of top water trolling, some blind trolling, seeing if we can get into the bite. Our setup for the top water trolling is going to be the Pen 12H, spooled with 12 pound pink Andy monofilament. The lure on that reel is going to be a four and a half inch lure. It's a Billy Vape Mini Turbo Slammer in the color Pearl Blue. One of my favorite lures. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of blind trolling and then head out to the Continental Shelf, which is located in between 550 and 650 feet. We're gonna troll around there, see if we can find any forms of life. Hopefully we'll get into the bike. Around this time of year, you've got tuna and dolphins swimming around. You've got a little bit of a west wind, which means it's pushing all of the debris and the uh, bait offshore. So we'll see what we can get into. We're gonna be trolling at about eight to 10 knots, kind of fast. We want the fish to chase us down. We don't want to give them a chance to examine our baits. All right, we got tuna busted on top of the water here about 100 yards away. Hopefully we'll get the hookup. They're here, definitely. They're going crazy right over here. So they just heard the boat going by, which made them go down, but we'll see if we get the hookup. Tuna going by. See, we got more than likely a skipjack because they're floating around a lot on top this time of year. Definitely going to be a tuna because I saw them busting on top. Oh, there he goes. He's trying to trying to put his shoulders into it. Oh. Taking off. He's not like being caught. He finally figured out he was getting hooked. Typical tuna. Oh my god, I just got hooked. Reaction. Here he comes. I see him coming up to the side of the boat over here. Doing his final countdown right here with some death spirals. Coming up to the top. Skipjack. 
all day. It's always odd. You can see the tuna busting on top and you can almost call it when you're out deep in 600 feet of water and you see fish busting on top, that's more than likely tuna. If you ever see that, just prepare yourself get ready for that bite because if they're hitting on top like that they're hungry all right so that was catching a skipjack tuna super fun ultra tough fighting fish as you can see right at the boat they start giving you a little trouble they start doing death spirals going to one side going to the other but you take your time use a little bit of finesse patience and you get them in you bring home dinner to the family all right now we're going to clean this fish to clean the tuna I start out by making an incision right behind the head from the top of the shoulder down to the belly right behind the pectoral fin. Then the next thing I'll do is I will make a slice that goes down the top side of the fish right behind his dorsal fin. I'll go all the way down from the head down to the tail. Then I'll flip him around and I'll do the same thing. I'll make a, a slice up the entire body from the belly all the way back to the tip. Then I'm going to flip him around again and I'm going to make sure that I slice through the meat staying close to his spine bones. Get all the way down to the spine. Once I feel the spine, I will stick my knife all the way through about halfway down the fish's body and I'll run it all the way towards the tip to release the back side of the fillet from the body. Then I will flip my knife around I'll grab onto the tail and I will run my knife up towards his head. Now, tuna rib cage bones are rather soft so you can run the knife right through it and that releases the entire fillet from the body. You drop the slab on your cutting board, then you're gonna flip the fish over and repeat the process. We're gonna make a slice right behind his head, behind the pectoral fin, all the way from the top, from the shoulder down to the belly. Then we're going to make another slice on the top side, the dorsal fin, all the way up the body. And then that same slice goes on the underside, from the belly all the way to the tail. Then we're going to release the, the meat from the body part on top, all the way down to the spine. Insert our knife and run it back all the way to the tail, releasing the back side of the fillet. Then we'll flip the knife over and we'll run it all the way up to the head, release that second side of that second fillet. Now we've got nothing but a carcass left. All right, and so that is how you clean a tuna. Now, you notice, I did not take the skin off this fish. When filleting tuna, there are two rules of thumb you gotta follow, otherwise you're gonna tarnish your meat. Rule number one is don't remove the skin until you're ready to eat it the meat will start to turn brown if you take off the skin. Rule number two, do not rinse your fish off with fresh water. It will turn it into mush within the hour. You'll get this light brown mushy colored meat on top and that's just no good. Rinsing your fish off with fresh water does nothing but make it look pretty. Don't do it. Don't worry about it being bloody. Don't worry if it's got scales all over it. Do not rinse off your fish with fresh water. All right, now it's time to get to the best part of catching any fish, the cooking and eating. So when I make tuna, I like to grill it, but I've got this special Asian inspired marinade that I like to leave it in. But first what we gotta do is we gotta finish processing our fillets. We have to remove the meat from the skin before we can go forward and do any of this. To remove the meat from the skin on a tuna, you have to be aware that they are what's called a hardtail fish, which means they have pin bones that run down the entire lateral line of their fish. So you have to get rid of these. To get rid of these is fairly simple. You just make a slice down the flesh right next to the pin bones. Then you will take your knife and in a perpendicular fashion, you're going to insert it down the sides of the pin bones and sort of swipe away along the skin, running between the fat layer and the flesh. You do this a couple of times and it will strip the meat off the skin, no problem. Tuna skin is paper thin in some parts so you have to be careful. If you leave a little bit of skin on the flesh, all you do is flip it over and gently trim it away. Then you can repeat the process for the other side. Same thing, 
Run your knife down the pin bones. Then in a swooping fashion, drive the knife down the side of the pin bones and turn it perpendicular to run it along the skin and gently remove the flesh from the skin. You'll do this with both your slabs of meat. And then you're gonna portion them out appropriately. And now we're gonna prepare the marinade, the Asian inspired marinade, my secret recipe. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get a half a cup of orange juice. Then you're gonna add in a half a cup of soy sauce. Then you're gonna add in some olive oil. You're gonna juice a whole fresh lemon. You're gonna dump in some parsley, dump in some garlic, dump in some basil. And then you're gonna add in some black pepper. You're gonna mix this all around till it's nice and mixed. Then you're gonna throw your fish in Make sure it's all mixed up and gets all those spices and everything and aromatics on it. And then you're going to set it in the refrigerator for at least one hour. So while I'm letting the fish rest with this recipe, I like to make about a cup and a half of rice in a rice maker. If you don't have a rice maker, go on ahead and you can make it on the stove top. You're also going to want to go out and you're going to want to light up your grill. Let your charcoal ash over real good. You don't need very high heat to cook tuna. Once the hour has gone by and the tuna has rested in the marinade, it's time to get it on the grill where the charcoal has ashed over. The first step is, is you're gonna lay your tuna fillets on the bottom grill, the hot grill. You're gonna sear it. You're gonna get some nice grill marks on it. You're gonna leave it on the grill for just a couple of minutes, not very long. Then you're gonna close the lid. Then you're going to transfer the fillets to the top grill and flip them over. And you'll close the lid and you're going to let that set for another three to four minutes. Again, we don't want to overcook the fish and let it dry out. So a little tip about these tuna steaks. If when you cut your meat open, it's slightly pink, it is perfectly done. If it's overly white on the inside, you've probably overcooked it a little bit, but that's okay. It's gonna be delicious regardless. All right, so now we've let it rest on the top grate of the grill for a couple minutes. It's time to take it off the heat, plate it up, bring it back inside. The next thing I like to do for this recipe is I'll mix up a prepackaged salad, a Southwestern salad. It's great. It's got a bunch of different little pre-cut lettuces. It's got kale, it's got green and purple cabbage, and a few other things. It also comes with some tortilla strips, some cheese, and this great buffalo ranch dressing sauce. You mix it all in a bowl, take it, mix it up. It's going to be great. And now it's time to serve us up a plate. What we're going to do is we're going to take a nice piece of that tuna, Plate it up, take a nice serving of rice, and we're gonna serve ourselves a good portion of that Southwestern salad. That to me is delicious looking. This is my favorite way to cook tuna. I love this recipe, I've been making it for years and I've perfected it. All right folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned a little bit about a great recipe for making tuna. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.